zooming out uh, in general in education, um, uh, there's something called critical race theory. Mm -hmm. um, can you comment on what are your thoughts about uh, this kind of perspective on race and race in America uh, to the degree that it's becoming a part of yeah. the education program? Okay, so the first thing I wanna say- What is it? Well, the first thing I wanna say about critical race theory is that critical race theory has become a term. So I'm gonna put quotation marks around the term critical race theory. We can, we, I'm, in a minute, I'll talk about critical race theory without quotation marks. But to begin with, I wanna talk about critical race theory because the reason why people are talking about critical race theory so much now is because politicians, mainly Republican right-wing politicians, have created a boogeyman, critical race theory with quotation marks around it. They have created a boogeyman, and they have tried to make it seem as though this boogeyman believes all sorts of ideas that Americans should loathe and that Americans should fear. And they've created this boogeyman and they've created it, and they've done a very good job of creating the boogeyman and they have mobilized uh, sufficient uh, um, you know, public support such that you know, there are a number of states that have passed laws uh, prohibiting the teaching of so-called critical race theory. Now, the first thing I want to say about this is that um, this campaign, this these laws, these various policies telling teachers don't teach this and don't teach that, and you can't you can't use this book, you can't use that book. This is a frightening encroachment on freedom freedom of speech, freedom to learn, freedom to listen, freedom to read, that's terrible. And it's one of the most frightening things that has happened in American life in recent memory. So that's the first thing I want to say about so-called critical race theory. Now, now I'll say something. I'm going to take the quotation marks off of the term critical race theory. Critical race theory is, is a sort of a you, you could have a nice conversation about actually what it is. Um, one way of viewing it is to say that, well, critical race theory is a community of ideas that comes from a community of people. Uh, the community of people would be people uh, in legal academia, in the... Um, you know, the period 1980, starting in probably the middle of the 1980s, it would be associated with people like Derek Bell, it would be associated with people like Kimberly Crenshaw, people like Charles Lawrence, people like Richard Delgado, people like Mary Matsuda. And these are folks who held uh, em embraced a couple of, you know, they, they, they articulated a couple of propositions. One of their propositions was that um, liberal race policy was insufficient. They would say that um, the racial policies of a person like my old boss, Thurgood Marshall, the lib, you know, the liberal liberal racial policies were insufficient to grapple fully with the pervasiveness and the depth and intensity of American racism. Their ba their basic claim, and I think by the way, it was a good claim. Their basic claim was that American racism is more central, more deeply embedded in American life than uh, most people perceived, including liberals. And I think there was a lot of strength to that proposition. Um, but then they also took on some other propositions with which I was in very strong disagreement. So I think it's perfectly fine to say that racism is a force in American life 
that is deeper, more pervasive, more stubborn, more resilient than I think people often, you know, often understand, often perceive. But then some of the folks, you know, in, in you know, critical race theory um, push further. Uh, one of the propositions that some of the people in critical race theory took was the proposition that um, uh, America was doomed to always be a country that would be governed according to the dictates of white supremacy. Uh, Derek Bell, who was a colleague of mine and a friend of mine, took that position. He talked about the permanence of uh, racism in American life. And he took the position that the various changes that had been wrought in American life were really, you know, mainly cosmetic. Uh, they didn't amount to a whole lot. I mean, Derek Bell took the position, you know, the, the second reconstruction, the civil rights movement. Well, yeah, it made changes, but at the end of the day, black people were still you know, a after the second reconstruction, we're still in a position of almost, you know, you know, I don't know, some of them would even say neo-slavery. Well, I think that's ridiculous. Uh, the second reconstruction changed a lot. And as for neo-slavery, neo-slavery, what are you talking about? Uh, uh, a black American was president of the United States between the years 2008 and 2016. I mean, what what are we talking about here? Uh, there has been a tremendous change, and I think people ought to understand that. Now, am I saying that everything is peachy keen and all right? No. Uh, the United States is still... Uh, to a very large extent, still a pigmentocracy, but that doesn't mean that a lot hasn't changed. A lot has. So I disagree with certain tenets of critical race theory and have been very outspoken in my disagreement. There's another one, by the way, I need to mention because we've talked so much in our discussion about freedom of speech, freedom to teach, freedom of listening. Another big problem that I've had with some of the people who talk of themselves as critical race theory people has to do with their attitude towards freedom, freedom of speech. Some critical race theory people think that uh, the American legal system is wrong in the latitude that it gives to what they call hate speech or the latitude that it gives to what they would view as racist beliefs. Uh, some, of, some of the people who associate themselves with critical race theory think that racist beliefs ought to be expunged with the aid of state power if need be. Well, I'm against that. And, um, you know, I, I think we are at a moment, a, an ironic moment, in which Actually, it's the right wing that has embraced some of the ideas that were championed by some of this, some of the people who call themselves critical race theorists. You know, they say, oh, we ought to expunge hate speech. Well, the right wing is saying this critical race theory, that's hate speech. So let's expunge it. And um, so I, you know, again, I've been very outspoken in my criticism of uh, some of the illiberal dimensions of critical race theory. So I've, you know, I've been a critic of certain features of critical race theory. I have uh, applauded certain features of critical race theory. Um, you know, critical race theory, you know, there's some aspects of it that I think have been useful. There's some aspects of it that I think have been, you know, profoundly wrongheaded. Um, so that's where I am, and I certainly, and you know, above all, I certainly am against any efforts to remove it 
from you know the intellectual universe. It is a part of our intellectual universe. People ought to know about it, and people ought to debate it, and people ought to be free to make up their minds to uh, conclude what they will about the strengths and weaknesses of critical race theory.